like relaxed. We're shooting from the hip. Shooting Super relaxed. The hip. Well, then should I leave? <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Tamara Chambers, and this is Cody Melcher, and this is Tamara. <laughs> Just saw us. And Cody also just saw us. <laughs> special guest. And we're wearing green because we're filming this on St. Patrick's Day. Yes. Uh, Sharon Bagora. That's an Irish thing. Oh, thanks. I, I know that one from Luckily Irish, the Disney <laughs> Channel original movie. <laughs> we just watched Beauty and the Beast. I grew up, this was my favorite Disney film growing up. Okay. okay. I was a Hercules kid. And also I might have had a crush on Hercules in retrospect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I definitely wanted to be one of the um, pot ladies who sang in Hercules, so. The, uh, the, oh, the they, muses. They come from the pot, They, they have names. Well, because you also have the Mrs. Pods. I was like, I thought, I was like, oh, yeah. I thought you were just obsessed with being inanimate water-bearing objects. <laughs> I played Mrs. Potts um, in high school with Rachel Teets, who some of you know. Um, she was Belle. And I was not in that. This is a reaction video. We're not mm -hmm. reviewing it in a, by any means. Um, there may be spoilers, but everyone knows the story of Beauty and the Beast. It's a tale as old as time. <laughs> That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a spoiler specific to the story that is specific to this movie that most people watching this will understand what we're talking about, and that would be the uh, the gay elephant in the room uh, <laughs> that isn't me. <laughs> I enjoyed the movie for the most part in a way that's like, I didn't need this, but it's fine. And then the end kind of <laughs> redeemed it for me. I would I would pretty much co-sign that. Uh, I think it's true for most Disney movies, and really a lot of movies today in general, is. Uh, the supporting cast usually ends up saving the day. Oh, yeah. Uh, the ending was great. Um, uh, you know, I think when Beast transforms, he could get it. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I was fine watching it. It was enjoyable. Mm -hmm. There's one weird moment that's new to this movie that's a song that we'll talk about. We'll get there. And uh, I will say that the fundamental problem, which we've discussed, is when you make it live action, it makes Beast too real? Uh. And that whole, she gonna fuck a buffalo lion thing becomes real unnerving. Like, it gets under your skin. Right. I mean, look, I know what you're thinking. You're like, no, but that's true for the cartoon as well. But in the cartoon, mm -mm. he's a two-dimensional cel-shaded creature. And also in the live action one, at one point, he's just like, hairy buff shirtless dude in a bed. And like, when he turns away, it's like, okay, from behind, you know, I'm just saying. Like, you know. <laughs> I, okay, I love Emma Watson. Um, yes. I think she's super, I mean, maybe the most beautiful woman I've ever laid eyes on. Um, I think she has killer eyebrows. Um, <laughs> just she, like, name in a couple things I love. Um, she is not a vocalist, and everyone kind of knows this going in. Mm -hmm. It doesn't usually bother me in movies. I saw La La Lambs, they're not vocalists. Um, didn't bother me at all. This, it just didn't hit the mark. It was passable. I'll say she was better, as much as I love Emma Stone, she was be a better singer than Emma Stone uh, was in La La Land. I love all you Emmas. All y'all are great. Yeah, all the Emmas are great. They truly are the Zac Efron's of women. Um, <laughs> There's a couple added songs <laughs> yeah. throughout the film. They also, they, dis they didn't put in Home, which I'm like, why are you adding songs and not putting in Home, which is a right? beautiful song? Right. Why are you doing that? Right? They, they took out a bunch of my favorite Disney classics from this one. They took out Go the Distance. They took out Make a Man Out of You. Kiss the Girl. They took out Kiss the Girl. And I was like, where <laughs> are my favorites? There's what I referred to as a Phantom of the Opera moment. With and that Beast, was spot on. Where he just, he sings a torch song of Forlorn. Uh, which also, I believe that was the same song that also, in, no, no, that was a different song that involved three actors that they hired for no reason to play Child Beast, his mother, and his father, and we saw them for literally three seconds and never again. You literally just paid three three extras to be to be front and center, you, and you got costuming for them and put makeup on them, and they just stood there. I'm, I'm hoping that it was supposed to be longer. <laughs> yeah, then it had to be good. I, also, the kid they cast was creepy as hell. Yeah, that kid. Farts. We are not wig shaming a child. Um, we are wig shaming the costuming department, <laughs> uh, who are all adults and they know better. The way I would describe the child is Brad Pitt's character in Interview with a Vampire as a child. Yeah. Like chibi Brad Pitt vampire. I've not right? seen that movie all the way through, but I know I have the visual in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Tamara hasn't seen part of Interview with Vampire. I have a lot of those. So then Beast has this like soliloquy song moment yeah. where he stands on a parapet uh, and just sings forlornly about the concepts of love and loss and, and just, and, and, and really he could have just like laid down on a piano. <laughs> honestly, and it's very epic. 
It's supposed to be very epic. It's yeah. shot epically. And it, also, the notes aren't impressive that he's singing. He's yeah, that one actually bothered me way more than Emma singing. Like, because it was supposed to be such a powerfully swelling song, like, mm -hmm. I don't think Emma ever had a song where it was, like, a huge, you know, uh, like, uh, the tigers come at night moment. Which is what home is supposed to be, and then they cut that maybe because she couldn't sing it, maybe. Right, ooh, maybe, oh, maybe, oh, 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 oh. This is controversial a, got, in here. We got a conspiracy theory. Oh, damn! Uh, pretty sure Tamara and I just laughed the entire time silently to ourselves. Mm -hmm. it, it starts, and you're like, oh god, what's happening? Yeah, yeah, like, the moment, like, he just, like, I think he, like, turns and goes, like, what have I become? Like, and yeah. it's like, oh no! <laughs> it sounded almost like, uh, <laughs> Go, go right ahead. I... Another thing that bummed me out was that not, I can count on like one hand how many jokes uh, like really worked for me. The jokes fell so flat Yes, I, uh, it says a lot about the jokes that Emma, when Emma Watson gets smacked in the face with a giant snowball. <laughs> And no one else thought it was funny, but Cody was I thought delighted. it was hilarious. <laughs> Straight in the face. I'm surprised he didn't break her nose. And that That was, would have been a great twist, though. That would have been the true lesson good of Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> she becomes the Beast. It's like Shrek. Oh. <laughs> I liked the edgy darkness that they brought into it. And I wish that they would have combated that with uh. some actual comedy. I'd agree. Yeah. That that's like, that's, that should be the thing that Disney excels at. Yeah. Um, and also it, 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 it says a lot that we just said the sentence or Tamara just said the sentence. I liked the edgy darkness they brought to Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> when, so when they introduced him though, I was like, holy shit, this is like, he's a little intimidating. Like I'm frightened. Oh yeah. 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 I will say that much. Like it was a lot like, um, uh, it was a lot like that scene in Rogue One with Darth Vader where you suddenly realize, oh, this is why everyone's afraid of Darth Vader. Very similar to this where it's like, oh, Beast is actually a terrifying creature. Because in the cartoon... He's so cute. It gets then really awkward when the love part starts happening because it's such an A sudden shift. Yeah. Because she's like, she falls in love with him pretty quick. You know, Stockholm Syndrome happens fast. What's going on genitals-wise, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so like we all know that most mammals, not most, a fair number of mammals have a baculum, which is the bone that, that sticks the penis out. Yes? So, right? So, sure. yes. Uh, dogs, polar bears, raccoons. Um, so, the thing is, he's a buff lion, right? So, like, ungulates, which are, like, hooved animals, don't. But he's not hooved. And some cats have them. So, it's like, so he got a penis bone is what I'm wondering. And, like, not too much. Let's not get weird. But, you know. Mm -hmm. Is he got a penis bone? Time passes poorly in the live action version versus the animated yes, one. Yes. Uh, you're never really sure how much time's going on. Things happen more concurrently with Kevin Klein as the father, as Belle's father, uh, Maurice. Because we keep checking in with him so much, yeah. it seems like time's not passing as quickly. Seems like this all took place in a week. Right. Because that's the thing, it's like, yeah, in, in the cartoon, it felt like you were getting glimpses of all of these like moments that were happening over all this period of time. Until you get to the end, um, and then the whole, the wonderful scene, like the whole, the villagers come and they try to kill the beast. And um, I love that. I love, we, we <laughs> I have, love, I love it when they come to kill the beast. <laughs> love that killing scene. Like we said, it's the side characters who like uh, really mm -hmm. bring things um, like up a notch. Yeah, there's a really tragic moment where at the end where they all like turn in an animate and it's and together, I'm crying. Yeah. Like it yeah, totally and Chip almost dies. Yes. Like Jesus. And I was just not expecting it because I hadn't felt true great emotion <laughs> true film. <laughs> then everyone like seeing each other for the first time in their human forms was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. That was done well. A little weird ADR stuff going on there mm -hmm. in terms of audio. Oh, uh, yeah. The dialogue replacement that they do. There was a lot of like people talking off camera at the end, which felt a little disjointed for me, but I also, I, you know, I, I do film stuff. So I probably, I'm that. probably somebody who would notice that more. Ben McGregor was Lumiere. That was interesting. I love him. Yeah, he's great. He was one of my first crushes of all time. <laughs> In Star Wars, I loved him. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's no Zac Efron. <laughs> him and Shia LaBeouf were like my two celebrity crushes. Oh man, That's your crushes, <laughs> your crushes turned poor. <laughs> I didn't know that Mrs. Potts was played by um, Emma uh, Thompson. Yes. Or Watson. Watson. Emma Stone. No. Emma Emma Bunchenfeld. Yeah. Emma Thompson, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> And I adore her with all of my heart. Yes. Um, so that yes. was wonderful. I was very, I was also very happy that Nanny McPhee was playing a teapot. <laughs>
Not how I know her, but all right. <laughs> Not seen that movie. <laughs> I haven't either. <laughs> Tamara's never seen Nanny McPhee. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought Gaston had a killer voice. Yeah. He can sing. Yeah. Uh, I wish he had been a little more front and center in the Gaston song, though. Yeah. It felt it felt like it felt more like Lafoe's song mm -hmm. than Gaston's song, as far as I remember the Gaston song going. And the comedy in that, the nothing in that landed for me, no. comedy wise. And there was also a very weird moment where Lafoe says he bites. No one bites like Gaston and lifts up his shirt and he has a bite mark on his stomach. Mm -hmm. And that was very confusing, considering all of the coding that they had been giving in terms of the homosexuality aspect. I was yeah. like. Wait, Wait well, is there a, is that, is Are you that... hinting that like, they had hooked up maybe? Right. You want me to just talk you about that? You have so much okay. experience. So <laughs> Lafoe um, starts off, as you would imagine, I think as all of us expected, where he's just, you know, he's the sidekick Patsy, he's super obsessed with Gaston, loves him, uh, and, uh, and says a lot of, you know, statements to that effect. It's very clear. Also though, I want to say, it's not crazy in the spectrum of stereotypical. Like, it's not, they didn't go yeah, they, too I'm, far. Later, during the uh, kill the beast moment and on the invasion, one of Gaston's uh, or three of Gaston's dudes go up to fight Cogswell and then or Cogsworth, uh, and uh, the uh, dresser comes in, dresses them up in like fancy women's out outfits from that era. Two of them get upset and run away, but one of them is happy about it. Like there's like a weird moment where he like smiles and thinks he looks pretty. The weirdest moment. Like that's we the most explicitly weird moment. We're like, what was that? And so it's like a kind of problematic thing of like, uh, you know, the whole thing of like boys wearing dresses, and, and it's also a confusion of sexuality and gender to some extent. At the very end of the movie, there's the, the big uh, ballroom dance wedding scene, dance. wedding, and they're all dancing, and Lafoe's dancing with a woman, and so we're all we're like, oh, that's kind of bullshit. Like, he why haven't danced with a woman? What the hell? And then there's this one moment where they spin the guy from earlier, from the pretty boy moment, into Lafoe, and they have like a connection moment that did kind of retroactively redeem a fair amount of what was going on. Mm -hmm. Is it is it the greatest? First gay character, well, first explicitly gay character in a Disney movie to some extent. Not the greatest, but it, I, it wrapped <laughs> it up in a good way. Right, and I'm—I I mean, at this point in my life, I'm willing to take what I can. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for being on with me. Thank you for having me. I adore you. Um, it was a pleasure. Remember, go out there and f that buffalo. <laughs> you you deserve just, it. Uh, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.